This is the New Covenant Family Tapes Ministry, bringing you the Word of God with simplicity and understanding. Listen to the Word of God and watch it change your life. We worship you. We honor you and then we are welcome in this place. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our hearts. Glory be to the name of the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the lifter of our heads, the maker of all things, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher of our faith. You are awesome in this place. We glorify your name. We reverence the name of Jesus Christ, the King, the head of the church. The one that died for us and rose again from the dead to purchase our redemption. We exalt you here today. We honor you, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let the purposes of your heart be established. Let your heart be revealed to your people. Wonderful Holy Spirit, have your way in this calm meeting. Change us into the likeness of his glory. Impregnate us with the plans and purposes of our Father. Let our heart be filled with his thoughts, with his mind, with his ways. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, therefore your ways are not my ways. In order to cause us to walk like you, to make us to follow your ways, you have to give us your thoughts. You have to cause us to know your mind. Open our hearts. Open our eyes of understanding. Let blindness be destroyed in this meeting. Let light come so strong that every heart will be illuminated. Let everyone get pregnant with destiny. Let everyone discover their place in your plan. And not only that, end up with that commitment that will cause a realization, that will cause a manifestation. By the time we leave this mountain, we will become agents of change in our society. We will become instruments of transformation. Father, this nation needs a reformation. All it takes is for you to touch a man and a family will be touched. And you touch a family, a community will be touched. You touch a community and a nation will be touched. You touch a nation and the whole world will be touched. Touch Nigeria by beginning with our lives, Lord. Change this nation by beginning with us here. To change that campus, all you need to do is to change a man here. To change that city, all you need to do is to change a man here. To change that community, all you need is to change a man here. To change that church and fellowship. All you need is a man. Lift your hands and say, here am I. Begin with me. Giving your life as an offering. The Bible said to present it as a living sacrifice. If God is convinced that you are his, that you have offered yourself, he will do amazing things with you. There is nothing God cannot do with a man that is totally sold out to him. He has redeemed us from every nation. Lord, we worship you and we worship you. He has redeemed us from every nation. Lord, we worship you. He has been given a name above all names. He has been given the name of 
above them, Lord, we worship you, and we worship you. He has redeemed us every morning, Lord, we worship oh, Lord, we will Ay, o próprio Abaquila Vafse Abradeta, vou nas trias com uma lei vos tris Vifros toma babale que vos te baixa leves For the testimony of Jesus Christ Is the spirit of prophecy let it rest on every individual, but those who sing, those who minister, those who teach, those who administer. The aura of the king, the glory of my king, the splendor of our God, filling his house, saturating every heart. Taking us beyond this world into that realm where you dwell. The realm of all possibilities, a realm where we can see as clearly as we are seen, where we can see like you see, where we can know like you know. Where you don't have to shout for us to hear because your thoughts are now our thoughts. That realm of intercourse. Where your seed drops in our heart, causing us to be pregnant for you, for you, we are your bride. We are not supposed to be pregnant for any other, but to nurture your plans, your dreams, your purposes, and this earth, and pursue your plan in our lives. Open that veil. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, lift up your hands. I thank you. There will be not one person stepping into this meeting this weekend that will leave the same. Let every affliction and oppression be destroyed as we experience Queen only in your presence. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. This is Dominion Image Camp Meeting, and you are welcome. You're welcome to the Mount of Transfiguration. Hallelujah. You're going to experience the Lord for yourself. You're going to experience even Elijah and Moses. You're going to experience the Holy Ghost for yourself. Vanian Kajeli Kiste, O dear Dalabalaya, Haya Tustus, and the King and Stenekin Halazaya and Ropaya. There is a person behind the pulpit. Anytime I jam him there, my life changes. If you know what ministry is, those who minister, you won't play with your ministry. Mm -mm. It's either when you are climbing up, he is leaving. Or when you are climbing up, he walks inside you and possesses you. A human being is not meant to be preaching from the pulpit. Not a church pulpit. A human being is meant to walk up, hand himself like a mic. There is a person. I have seen him about two different times where God opened my eyes. And since that day, I got converted. I fear the pulpit. If I'm not sure of myself, I, get, I sit down there and repent and finish everything first. Because people die behind the pulpit. People die there. Ministers are falling dead there. 
The gentleman wanted to help God carry the ark. God killed him. You're too small to help God. He can do his work by himself. He said, He that called thee is faithful. He will also do it. Anything you are called to do that you can do, God didn't call you to do it. It's probably the devil. What you are called to do, you can't do without the one that called you. But he that called thee is faithful. And he shall also do it. It is something with that Bible. There is a spirit behind the book. You know, uh, there is a gentleman that started reading in, in my secondary school. The six and seven book of Moses. He, he, that guy kept writing to India and kept getting order. Anyway, in, a, in, in a, I think of form, form three or what, he ran mad. But from four, he used to get replies under his pillow. I used to boast around the stu- among the students, you know. He ran mad. Why? Because the six and seven book of Moses is not a normal book. It's Satan's Bible. And the spirit that inspired it is with it. People can read it and recite some words from it. Eh? And turn sand to flies. It's not a normal book. The Bible is not a normal book. There is a spirit behind the word. That's why the Bible says, let him that hear it hear what the spirit is saying. There is a letter and they there is spirit the letter kill it that's why theologians many priests bishops have studied this for years and they are dead they studied the letter and left the spirit no one can interpret a book like the author why are you trying to interpret what somebody else wrote when the person that wrote the book said i'll be present with the book ask me what i'm saying and i will explain can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Proof it is the same way. The man who rose again from the dead is still alive and is continuing his ministry. The only thing he asks us to give him is our body. He didn't ask us to do the ministry. It, Jesus did not ask you to go and do his ministry. He said, give me your body. The church is called the body of Christ. Not Christ. The body. Then Christ himself takes that body and continues his work. When he came the first time, he borrowed a body from Mary. This time he said, I need your body. You've been trying to do what only God can do. That's why your Christian life has been a struggle. Christianity is not a struggle. See how you've been falling. You make resolution, you make up your mind, you tell God, you promise him, you fall again. You can't please God in the flesh. You can't by resolution. You see the sin you are struggling with, you can't. The truth is, you cannot live the Christian life. The Christian life is not a change life. It is an exchange life. For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. If I'm dead, how come I'm still living? He says, no more you. I killed you to remove you. So that I can now live in you. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It is not I anymore. This one that is living now. No, it's not not that I. It's not I at all. It's not I. It is Christ that lived with me. That's the secret of living a Christian life. That's the secret of ministry. If you learn to surrender, and surrender means dropping everything, dropping self, ideas, concepts, programs, ambitions, and then you say, Lord, have your body, have my mind, my soul, my will. Then Jesus takes his body and does his work by himself. At that moment, opening blind eyes is no more a struggle. Raising cripples is no more a struggle. No, no, no. Unstopping deaf ears is no more a mystery. Because till now, I still don't understand the things I do when I let Christ have my have his way in me. Till now, I still don't understand the things I do, the things I'm able to do when I let Christ have his way in me. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that enables me one translation said true christ that strengthens me one translation said true christ that anoints me one translation said true christ that quickens me i can live a holy life through christ i can cast out devils through christ i can heal the sick through christ uh, each time i go back to me i like the same abilities i exhibited yesterday 
That's why sometimes I walked on water. Another time I'm sinking in the same water. And I'm wondering, is this in guesswork? No. Each time self replaces Christ, you are going under. Each time you allow Christ to displace self, you sail through. Tell your friend, welcome again to the Mount of Transfiguration. You are living here with your face shining like Moses. Oh, hallelujah. Give the Lord praise as you sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus plus nothing. Christ plus nothing is equals to enough. The other things you've been trying to add to him is why he has minus himself. Because God is so concerned about his glory that he won't share it with anything, any man, anything. Anything you add to God to make him equal to enough is an idol. Some people say those who help, God help those who help themselves. So they add an, a little God. They add a little charm. And whenever your theology is God plus something, what you are going to end up is minus God. And anytime there is minus God, you have minus possibilities. And you're going to be left with impossibilities. You're going to have minus divine capability. And you're going to be left there with your weaknesses. Christianity is not a struggle. It's a life. It's a life. Is a life. Part of what God has brought you here to do in you to destroy this struggle that has been going on in your life and bring you back into that place where you can rest in the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Let me show you something fast and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, glory be to the Lord. <laughs> Oh Lord, can I this Kibrasha Brett in a sofa? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. The power of an idea. In this world you live in, there is nothing as powerful as an idea. I know that you are aware that every major transformation that has taken place in our universe in terms of technology in terms of religion in terms of whatever in the political sense in educational sense all started as a concept in somebody's mind messages like what you're going to be hearing throughout this meeting all dropped in people and then they decoded it and they are releasing it in form of messages. And some of them are now in form of books, tapes. Products begin as ideas. Inventions begin as an idea, as ideas. May I even say this? You began as an idea. A camp meeting start began as an idea the car you drive whatever brand it may be began as an idea the products we see today the progress we see today the inventions the pro the transformations that's taking place all around us that we see in our world today that we all enjoy These are all ideas that took the body, the physical dimension that we express in their physical equivalents. For every one idea you see, a manifestation in reality, there are millions that died.
the future you've been dreaming of is going to start as an idea. It's not going to start as an event or as a product. The things you're believing God for, they're going to start as an idea. They're not going to start as products or as miracles or whatever. When you ignore ideas, you have blocked God's entrance into your life. The Bible, the book we read, the Bible, talking about the source, its own source said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Inspiration is how God blows ideas into your mind or your spirit. So when you block inspiration, you have hindered God for intervening in your life. Hmm. Ideas are so powerful that the Bible actually made it clear that one of the reasons God is sending the Holy Spirit in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh is to send a rain, a deluge, a flood tide of ideas to men. Which will result, because if ideas are inspired, the result will be a blessing. Something that will change lives and change society. The source of your idea actually determines the nature of your product. And it will determine whether you end up happy or sad. Whether you're going to end up worse off or better off. Because God is not the only source of ideas. Certain two can inspire you. That's why all the bad things too all started as an idea. I'm not more concerned today about the negative side of that equation. I want to deal more with the positive side of it. Job chapter 32 verse 8. Maybe that's a good place to start. <coughs> The book of Job 32, verse 8. Um, I don't know if you understand the background of the particular statement that was made here. Let me read the statement first. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. What exactly was going on here? Three of Job's friends came to see him in the midst of his suffering. And they were talking. And these were wise elderly men. And they were talking. And then there was a young man among them who was Elihu. And Elihu felt intimidated by what these guys were saying. He felt that he didn't have anything to say. He felt that he couldn't make contributions. You know, sometimes if you look at, <laughs> if you look at all the inventions that have taken place, all the things that has come to us from the western nations, if you look at what some of the great men of God have done, if you look at what some people you know around you are doing and achieving, you feel intimidated. You feel so small. As if God can't use you to accomplish anything serious. Hmm. Some people get so foolish that they start comparing themselves in the flesh. I mean, you know, uh, you know he, he's more handsome. is more beautiful this has nothing to do with beauty it has nothing to do with the body it has nothing to do with it go and look at some of the inventors some of them were some of the shortest men you have ever seen someone like apostle paul was a short man one of the guys that is shaking the world now miles moro very short man short men have changed this world so don't be intimidated by the glorious of this life. It was a little David that brought him down. <laughs> it is not what you look like on the outside. It is what you carry on the inside. God in this meeting is targeting the womb of your heart. 
Because that's where every greatness begins. Future wealth. Begate is not the way this man from now on. Some of these men who have grabbed our national whatever and put it in their own bank account are not the wealthiest people that are imagining in this country. As a matter of fact, those ones are right now sitting beside, in front of me here, sitting in this auditorium, looking at me. And some of them right now have nothing inside them. And all God is saying is, I want to impregnate you with something. An idea is a spam. When it comes from God, that is God's spam that has dropped in your womb. That's God's spam. That's God's seed. The truth is this, God doesn't, a lot of people wonder how does God talk to people. I want to hear from God. How does he speak to people? And then sometimes we hear all those testimonies, and the Lord spoke to me. It was so loud that I turned around and looked. Did you see anybody when you look? God doesn't speak to you from without. He speaks to you from within. God's words and voice comes in form of ideas. That's why many of you have not been hearing meanwhile he has been speaking because you are looking for one sound from heaven meanwhile all the sound was coming right from within you the new songs you're going to write the new business you're going to invent and create the new product you're going to create the new business you're going to launch they are all going to be dropped right inside you Stop looking outside. As a matter of fact, God does not dwell on your head. He doesn't dwell on your back. God's address is right there on the seat of your heart. And that is exactly where he speaks. He told Moses, make me a mercy seat. And he told him where to put the mercy seat. In the holiest of all. After you have passed the outer court, passed the holy place, then you get into the holiest of all. He said, put the mercy seat there. He said, there I will speak with you. So it's not in the body that God speaks to you. It's not in the emotion and in the soul. It's right there in the holiest of all. In your human spirit. So while he was busy listening, he felt so useless and so empty. Had nothing to contribute. Then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, Listen, my friend, it's not like that. It's not about oratory. It's not about talent. <laughs> it's not about connection. It's not about beauty. Is about inspiration. It's not about who you are connected to without. Success does not begin without. Success begins on the inside. Until you take step within, you won't take step without. Until your world expands within, you will not expand without. It doesn't matter where you are now, what you lack now, who doesn't know you, or who knows you, or whatever. Mm. if you allow God to score a goal in the womb of your spirit another great destiny has emerged mm -hmm. so this man was thinking in this direction for example <laughs> look at what Elihu said Look at from verse 5. When Elihu saw that there was no answer or wisdom in the mouth of these three men, then his anger was kindled. And Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered and said, I'm young and you are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and intimidated and does not show my opinion. And some of you had books and you are not writing it. Songs and you are not developing it. Because you heard Two-Face sing and you heard how he made millions and you felt that you are so small that your own can't go anywhere. And meanwhile, the next song that will rock the music industry is in your spirit now, trapped. You are intimidated by the ones who have manifested. Instead of putting into action what God is giving you. The Goliaths that are out there are so big that you felt so small like a David. He saw the so large that all you had was five stones. And you felt, what can five stones do? In the midst of large sword and shields, you have not seen anything. 
every big thing starts small. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. All God is trying to do is to get you just to believe in what he has told you. You know, it was Mary that Elizabeth spoke to. Elizabeth said, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. Because if there is no believing, there will be no performance. If there is no believing, it means that the spam hit your womb and flushed out. There was no conception. If there is no believing, it means you are constantly aborting. He said, I was afraid. That's why I didn't say anything. Verse 7. I said, days should speak. A multitude of years should teach wisdom. Thinking that this thing depends on how old you are. You know, I've been born again since 1960. Don't be intimidated by that. I've been in the ministry since 1940. Somebody was talking to me last Sunday. He said, you know, I've been in this ministry. Anytime you start counting age, you are incriminating yourself before God. You are actually asking the court. You are giving the court documents and information to prosecute you. Anytime you start saying, you know, that one of the thing, ways you know when the devil is dealing with a person is that saying, I've been this number of years. Because God is not interested in your longevity. He's interested in your productivity. Life is not measured by duration, but by contribution. You know, this long life thing, thank God for it. But I don't know if you know that there is something stronger than faith. There are about seven things revealed in the Bible that are stronger than faith. One of them is love. How many of you have noticed that? Love is stronger than faith. One of the things that is stronger than faith is truth. Actually, faith is at the mercy of truth because faith becomes deception when truth is not backing it. It becomes assumption. Now, one of those things that is stronger than faith is purpose, destiny. You will see men like Christ. It doesn't matter if Jesus has been confessing with his mouth, I will live 300 years. He wouldn't have. There were men like John the Baptist. And there were a lot of great preachers and teachers, people like Archbishop, who said they were going to be here for 120. But he left at 60. Mm -hmm. Faith is not enough. Your faith can be an assumption if it doesn't have a foundation. It's not that he couldn't have been here for 120. But there is something else. A lot of the teachings of faith ignore the sovereignty of God. There is what is called sovereignty of God. That God can be merciful on who he will be merciful. God can be gracious on who will be gracious. God can decide who to promote. If you even understand that, you understand that the principle is more important than the principle. So a good relationship with him can make him overrule some laws just to lift you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible said if a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. If he means fighting the battle for you to win it, he will fight it. And at the end of the day, they give you the victory. If he means writing the exam for you to pass it, he will write it. At the end of the day, they give you the result. That's what God does. That's why he has the power of grace to favor who he likes. And favor is not fair. It's not fair. Favor is not fair. Seven songs in the house of Jesse, you, you go to the bush and pick the one that was born out of wedlock. How, how, how did you arrange that, God? Okay. David had many wives, got a lot of legitimate sons. It is now Solomon that was born out of that woman of adultery. And you decide to pick up. How do you do? How come? Somebody else has been fasting. Look at the prodigal, uh, prodigal son's story. And that faithful son that had been in the house complaining. And he was the one that finished working and wasting everything. And you now come and you are throwing a party for. That's called grace. It was a favor. Say, by favor, I am who I am. That's what Paul said. He said, by the grace of God. I killed Stephen. You know, I killed a lot of preachers. I'm not qualified to be here at all. Of course, I should have been dead. I killed all kinds of people. I did all sorts. I aborted babies. I aborted dreams. I failed. I messed up many times. But by the grace of God. I didn't say by my power and might. By the grace of God. I am who I am. You wanted me out. 
But somebody bigger than man overrules. By the grace of God. That's what, it's more important to please God than anything. It's more important to be in his good book than anything. God, that is power. The throne, the power that is there. He has, it can overrule governments. It can overrule nations. It can overrule companies. It can overrule your boss. Just to lift you. It can do anything. It can divide the race. So, the greatest way to commit the heart of God to your life is by marrying his purpose. Purpose is stronger than faith. It wasn't only Abraham's faith that kept him. Even when he told lie, God kept protecting him. Why? The man was pregnant with what? Purpose. The nation of Israel. God has been looking for who to use to bring about the nation of Israel. Now, to bring a nation, he has a plan. Now, he, he, re, he finds a man to use. And the man was afraid. He lies to Pharaoh saying the wife was his sister because he made a lot of mistakes. Even when his faith was not strong, what was going for him is being in God's program. You don't know how serious this thing is. There's a man in the Bible called Cyrus. That guy got anointed. Meanwhile, he was a hidden and idol worshiper. Have you ever heard of an, an anointed idol worshiper? And it wasn't satanic anointing. God anointed him. He said, you don't know me, but I'm using you. He said, you're not even serving me, but I've called you. And I've anointed you. You are my anointed. Why? Time has come for me to bring my children, my people out of Babylon where I scattered them. And I have to find somebody to use. And your heart is willing. The man woke up one day and said, I have an idea. That house of God in Jerusalem, I want to rebuild it. He said, I don't know. I was sleeping. This idea dropped in me. And I think it's a good idea. Why should these people still be suffering? I make a decree. He still doesn't know. He doesn't go to church. Oh, but he's sponsoring the gospel. There's a company. I won't mention the name. The man gives two million annually to missions. He was so poor, he went through problems. And then he started tightening. A person taught him. He said, give your life. He said, I'm not ready yet. I have too many things, women and other. But he said, I'll tell you one thing. Any other thing God wants me to do, since I know I cannot live this Christian life, it's too high, I will do it. The guy said, anyway, for your business, you can start tightening, even from the company. He said, the company, as long as God is ready, um, he said, tightening in the midst of his 10%. From there, he said, giving up to 2 million to missions. God turned him into a multi million, turned that company into a national event. He's, the name is so popular now. It took years. I think I heard that two years ago he gave his life to Christ. After seeing the hand of God work for years, how can God be keeping covenant with a hidden? And this is the problem God has. Sometimes his own people called by his name will not even budge. They will yield. But some unbeliever out there is yielding. And he blesses him. There was a man he sent an angel to who was not yet saved. But because he was giving arms and doing certain things, the Bible said everything you're doing is coming to heaven as a memorial. Finally, God said, the only thing this man lacks now because I bless him financially, I bless, protected his family, angels are visiting him. I think I have to find a way to open his eyes to salvation. God has so many things to do on earth and he's looking for men. Purpose, destiny. If you look up, and this is not about these teachings of a purpose the way you have heard it. It's about finding something that is in the heart of God and telling him I'm available and willing. And then there are many things in his heart. Finding the one that marches with you, the one you are willing to die for. Say my purpose, I'm looking for my purpose, I'm looking for that. You are confused. You don't have any purpose. The purpose is God's purpose. Find out something in his heart. Looking for somebody to help him accomplish. Make yourself available. If he doesn't want you for that particular job, he will use you for that one. But there are so many things he's willing to do. The prayer of dedication, which is the prayer that actually un unleashes great ministries, great callings, great destinies. That prayer begins by saying, not claiming anything, but making yourself available Surrendering yourself and saying, Thy will, whatever you want, 
you want to send me to China, if you want me here, if you want me there. Now, at that moment, it's like, I'm at your service, Lord. Then God lets the man know what he wants him to do. Not, I'm at my service. I've already made up my mind what to do. But if you think that a little space left can accommodate you, you can come along. God doesn't have time for such people. He created you to use you. You are not the one to use him. There is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty. Turn to it. Verse 7 and 8. Read it with me. And to 9. Yes. They should speak. A multitude of years should teach wisdom. That's what I taught. But there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty. Give it them what? Understanding. Verse 9. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. So don't be fooled. Some may be in positions of authority. He's a governor. He's a senator. He's a president. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean he's wise. It doesn't mean anything. Fools sometimes grab power. Don't be, don't be deceived. Don't be, don't be intimidated by who is moving with siren. Even some fools have managed to find themselves in big position in ministry. I'm, I'm, I know what I'm telling you. Don't be intimidated, my friends. Don't be intimidated. God is set to do something great with your life. Can I hear you say amen? amen. But here is the interesting part. How does inspiration lead to understanding? It's a question. How does something that starts as an idea finally leads to a product? How does something that started as a sperm finally lead to a child? How does something that started as mere inspiration now lead to a book? How does something that started as just an idea lead to a company? Now 1,000 people are working there. How come this thing started as an idea but now it's a mighty program that is changing the whole state? How come it was an idea and now is an understanding? And the other question would be how come some people get ideas and never get understanding of it? How come some people never process their ideas beyond that primary stage? How come millions of sperm has hit your womb and not one has produced a child? There are reasons for that. There are reasons for that. I will tell you one of them right away. Habakkuk chapter 2. Oh, glory be to the Lord. I don't know. You notice what the gentleman said here. He said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. So, there is this watch, watch, watch that this guy is talking about. There is also this standing upon the tower that he's talking about. I will watch. I will stand upon my watch. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Now, I'll tell you what is the issue there. What is watch? He's talking about spiritual sensitivity. What the man is telling us is that God is always transmitting, but you might not be receiving. Why? Because you're not spiritually sensitive. If you're not sensitive from your inside, you're more conscious of the natural side of events. Even now in camp meeting, specific words are going to come to you. You know, you know, like I always say, it's not what God said to us that changes your own life. It's what God said to you. What did he say to you in this committee? Now, there is a man behind the pulpit and he's talking. I've learned him myself. But, God is talking to specific people. He's talking to you as a person. And when your word comes, you're distracted. You're not sensitive. You're not conscious. It flushes away. Your womb can't catch. There is this sensitivity required to capture visions and dreams. 
to capture the voice of God. There is vision casting. There is vision capturing. God does a casting to you. Your spirit catches it. it between husband and wife, it's, it's called ejaculation. When a man releases the sperm, that is the end of intercourse. Usually, men will slowly, slowly cool off. He has done a job. He waits for another time. The rest of the job now depends on the woman and her womb. Spiritual sensitivity. One of the qualifications of a fertile womb. Check believers that are productive. Check believers whose lives are always moving ahead. You can't meet me at the same spot three months every... You can't come and meet me now three months after you come and meet me I'm, I'm, no no I'm, think new things are always happening in my life <laughs> I don't know I can't explain it you know your skin I'm told that we, we, we change our skin how many times in a year every 28 days so at least 12 times every year this your skin change you are constantly being renewed if not you have aged by the age of 12 that's how it is. The womb too is being renewed. We call it menstrual cycle. When he finishes this month, he washes up, prepares himself and gets sensitive again. Any little thing that drops there, even if it's fibro, it will capture it and produce it. A big ball of fibro. So he becomes sensitive again. See how sensitive your eyes. That even a little fly wants to be your eyelids protects it. If anybody drops a little something as small as a grain of sand drops in your eyes, there is work, there is irritation. That's how sensitive your heart can be. That a grain of idea drops in it, something happens, there is an agitation, there is a reaction. I've come to a point now that God doesn't have to shout at me anymore for me to hear. I was much younger in, in the ministry in those days, and I was in the pulpit talking about how I had an audible voice. And as I was talking, I felt this hand touch me. And I stopped. And the people were looking at me and I had my head bend this way. And God was talking to me. He said, see how you are boasting about the audible voice? You don't know how much frustration you put me through before I got through to you that time. He said, what you are telling them is what I wanted you to hear two years earlier. I tried many times. I spoke to you many times. He, co he told me one particular situation why I was lying on the bed reading a book and I read a particular thing in the book and he started talking to me from that and when I got off from there everything went like this like the dream of the night he said I've been trying and he said what if that thing had to do with danger that could have harmed you and I needed to redirect your path you wouldn't have heard till two years after you have continued in that direction And that's why sometimes miracles are delayed. The things we are praying about are delayed. Any prayer that leaves 100% responsibility to God for the answer is irresponsible prayer. I, I, I think I should say it to the pastors. Maybe I'm not sure whether you heard it. I say any prayer you pray that leaves 100% responsibility to heaven to answer the prayer is a highly irresponsible prayer. The Bible that you read said, Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you think or ask. How? Through the power that is at work in you. In other words, God uses you to answer your prayers. And God uses people to answer your prayers. Yes, there are things that only God can do. But many a time, Majority of what we are telling heaven to do, heaven is depending on the earth to get it done. I like how a gentleman said it. He said, Without God, man can't. But without man, God won't. So anytime you pray and minus yourself on the equation, God will say, Amen, I have answered. But if you want the answer, put yourself back in line. In other words, prayers get answered when 
your prayer leads you to what to do that's how you know that god has answered your prayer actually majority of your prayer should lead you to a knowing prayer leads me to the place of revelation in the place of revelation i get up on my knees thanking god for manifestation the rest of the journey is merely planning and acting i don't think you heard what i said prayer should lead you to that point where that's the difference between children of god and sons of god sons of god manifest the government is on their shoulder they exercise dominion on earth children of god sit down and have their parents do everything for them like the keys in the house you give them food even after cooking the food you still have to put it in their mouth they can't take the food from the plate and put it in their mouth so there is that stage in your christian life when god tries to do everything for you i understand that that is baby who stage you can't achieve much in life god can't depend on you to get his program carried out on earth these are babies those ones are babies when you have started coming to sonship what is happening now is that you are taking responsibilities god can depend on you to get programs executed god can depend on you to get the kingdom finance it's not you asking god to send the money you are telling him how do we get the money and he gives you the ideas it's not asking god send somebody to do this no you are asking him what steps do we need to take what are the strategies we need to initiate to create this company what are the marketing strategies strategies we need to enlarge the fellowship the number of the fellowship what are the evangelism strategies that we need to triple the number of members in the church not god same members send them from the east send them from the west how will he send them it is men that are commissioned to go and win souls how do i double the strength of the leadership from 12 to 24 who and who do i recruit because god will not do the recruitment he might touch people in their heart you have a calling you have something to do he will tell them but there is need for somebody to give the invitation to allow them and give and delegate jobs and responsibilities and train them many of the things you get away with as a baby few years after as you progress down the line you get flogged for it you get flogged for it there are some things you've been getting away with that god is disciplining you for right now and you don't seem to understand you think god hates you no he's saying grow up my daughter grow up the fact that i allowed you to get away with it doesn't mean i'm pleased with it it's called permissive will i'm just permitting it because that's your age there are five steps required to process any idea from the point of contact to the point of delivery so you it's like the way from how a woman receives pregnancy you know somebody get pregnant they say i don't know how this happened though it's not true from now you will know how you got pregnant for god can i hear you say amen i don't i, I don't know how this happened though we we're just playing you know, and the guy was you know and then and, and if you have noticed a lot of young ladies coming up are so naive about the workings of their body they get around playing with some guys and all that a span can drop just on the surface and get you pregnant virgins can get pregnant without anybody breaking their virginity of course you saw the one that got pregnant in the bible that should warn you he said we're only smooching you know, and doing whatever once the thing drops the first stage is intercourse let me use literal words but you can try in your mind to see if you can connect it with the process of childbearing but the first stage is called fellowship that's how we get ideas fellowship there you find things like prayer worship study of the word meditation and all that you know watch watch what what is going on here this is intercourse stage when you're worshiping god you have to understand that you are doing bedroom assignment you are in the holiest of all that's why worship takes us to the holiest of all where intercourse takes place between the mind of god and the mind 
of the church or between the mind of God and the church. You know, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. That means God should think to us, not shout to us. If he thinks, we pick. He plans it, we get it. All this prayer, Lord, talk to me. Show me who my husband, show me. Who, uh, mm, you, you, those problems will end after this coming. Can I hear you say amen? Mm. Show me which job I'm to do. The committee doesn't need to end. By tomorrow morning, certain things will be so clear like this. You'll be wondering, eh? is that how easy it has been? What have I been doing all these years? I see businesses that will shake this country, imagine, out of this meeting. <laughs> Pastors, you get ready for church growth. If God gets a breakthrough, God told me, break this curtain between me and my people. If that contact is made, anything is possible. That's why you shouldn't play with your morning devotion. What is rushing out to work is frustration that you are prolonging. That's why if you have to work, the, the type of work you do requires, like today, since 3 a.m., I've been awake. You can wake up early and do some business before you get here. There are some things you hear in the night, in the morning, you need to develop. That's what you use the break to do. You start developing that message. You can get five messages out of that one message. But it's not just the message that we want you to develop. The concepts. Watch this. There is something called precept. I want to write precept here. When an idea is in the mind of God, it's called precept. Precept means an inspired idea that is still in the mind of God. In other words, right now, heaven is loaded with a lot of things that God wants to do on earth. So many things, how God will change that campus. is a burden to heaven. All the prayers that have been sent to heaven has turned into concepts and precepts in the mind of God. Plans, purposes, dreams, visions that he wants to carry out on earth. Every need, every cry in the heart of men somewhere, some poor people, some suffering people, some places where there is war, in Rwanda, where there is famine, and they are crying to heaven. All those cry, when they get to heaven, they condescend like rain. They go up like evaporation. They condescend like rain. They form a plan in the mind of God. They form an idea. They form a program. They form a vision. God begins to carry a vision. When the children of Israel were in Egypt and they were crying under the bondage of Pharaoh. Like they are crying under some nation under the bondage of dictatorship. Under some nation that is ravaged by corruption. Under some nation that is ravaged by famine. Under some nation that is ravaged by war. Heaven gets pregnant with an idea. What is that idea? The solution. From that moment, God starts looking for a man who can carry it for him. The guy doesn't have to be in a uh, president, doesn't have to be in leadership at that time. You see, if you can catch something for God, some of you are going to rule this country right? as I'm talking to you. Right now, you don't even have a dream for to be a president to go into politics. If you can catch something for heaven, it is not an ambition to lead that starts you on a journey to greatness. It is seeing a need you can solve. It is not profit that starts a great business, it is seeing a problem you can solve in society. It is a problem you have identified to find solution for that starts a big business. Those who go into ministry to make gain will die frustrated. Those who go into business with purely the motive to go and collect people's money will be frustrated out of that business. Businesses are dying every day. But those who go there to render services, to solve problems, end up with so much profit. See why people like us are so loaded. You come for committee like this and I come here and start doing jamboree. Jamboree for what? But you see, when I finish work like this, allow God to use me to pass things from his heart to men. To solve problems for people. All of a sudden, bank accounts starting like, that's how I get my pay. There's no salary that pays me anything. Is this work. That's why I can't be poor. That's why if you understand kingdom principles and God's way of doing things, hard time in society doesn't make things hard for you. It makes things easier. It makes things, it makes you, actually, kingdom people prosper most when society is going down the most. I don't think you heard what I said. Kingdom people prosper the most 
when there are more problems in society. Do you know why? Because their secret for prospering is solving problems. So when all the problems are solved, they have very little to do. So, like Nigeria now, the guy that will solve the problem of corruption is going to be a multimillionaire. The truth is that there is a reward for every problem you solve. And to solve that problem is to develop certain ideas which you, precepts, you pick it from God, is precept in his heart. You translate it. When it falls into your heart, you are fellowshipping with God. You are fellowshipping with God. What happens is that you get what we call revelation. Now, technically speaking, motivational wise, we call it concepts. What is concept? A precept that has left God's heart and is now in a human heart. It was an idea that started with God, but God has communicated it to a man and a man is now carrying it. A precept is a spam, but it's still with a man. But a concept is the same spam, but it's now inside the woman. I'm sure you've been blessed by this message. For more of these and other inspiring messages, please contact any Dominion City chapter all over the nation or Dominion City Lagos, 11 stroke 13 Jumat Olukoya. Phone number 0179-26879-0803-718-3623-0803-351-4993 or email ncftapes at yahoo.com. Still making eternal investment in your life.